Hi everyone, I'm Laurie L and I want to thank you so much for coming to Talk To Me Tuesday. This is going to be a regular program that we're going to host on our site Your Light on our page. And today I'm so thrilled uh, that we're going to be hosting uh, Tasha Elaine. I'm going to invite her to join us in just one minute. Um, if you don't know anything about our site, Your Light, we are a holistic services community uh, where we feature soulful practitioners who bring you everything from mediumship to energy healing to shamanism, uh, you name it, um, we're servicing you with that. So um, I want to make sure before I bring Tasha on that the people who are watching, if you can tell me that you can hear me, that would be wonderful. I have my fancy headsets on and I feel them falling off me, so I want to make sure that you can hear me. All right, I got the thumbs up, so I'm feeling like you can hear me and I'm ready to go. All right, so let me invite Tasha in and um, we're going to interview and my name is Laurielle just in case you didn't hear me and there she is Tasha Hello. how are you I'm good how can you, you hear me okay I'm great I, I can hear you well can you hear me okay I certainly can I'm so excited right. oh and Colleen's here thank you Colleen. Colleen so Tasha I just want to introduce you um we're so grateful to have you as a soulful practitioner for Our Sight, Your Light. Um, you're known as the igniter and mirror of truth, which I can't wait to talk about uh, a little bit more. A modern medium, a healer, a yogi, and an intentional artisan. So I definitely want to get into, you know, where you're from, um, how you uh, got into the business of holistic services and energy work and healing. But first, I thought that um, your title, you know, how you present yourself to the world um, as a holistic uh, provider is so unique. So I thought maybe you could break it down for us a little bit. Like what, what does each one of those mean? You know, what is the igniter and the mirror of truth? Because I think that's so powerful. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it was really powerful for me to unveil for myself as well in the sense of you know, really trying to turn inwards and hone in and ask myself, like, what is my goal? What is my, my purpose? Because I, I feel like, and I've seen this reflected in my students and in, and in my friends and my colleagues, that, like, what my life purpose is for myself is also, like, deeply ingrained with what I choose to provide for, you know, my community, like, what I choose to offer as a practitioner. Um, and the igniter of truth came forwards for me um, when I was doing some of my shadow work, like looking, taking a look at myself and seeing like, where is it that I need to grow as a person? And, you know, looking at how, for example, like if we're working or looking at archetypes, there is a, a, an archetype when it's balanced and it's gold. And then the archetype also has its shadow side. And right. for me, um, it was judgment, like judgment kept coming up where I was kind of, I was embodying queen energy, but imbalanced. So I was in this like tyrant sort of state where it's like, you know, I have this ability to just see people's potential. And I was getting mm -hmm. frustrated with people like, come on, like, you know, why aren't you like in your gold? Like I see, it's like, I see through where people are and I just see them like at their core, like their, what their true, what their truth is, what their true potential is. Mm -hmm. And it sort of came up in that tyrant energy in the beginning. And then I started looking at this thinking like, what is this about? How does this, you know, show up in my life? Like how am I a tyrant towards myself or who has played a tyrant role for me and taught me like how to approach this gift this way, or maybe nobody like, you know, we're, we're lacking eldership, um, in our society. And so perhaps I didn't have an elder who was there to be like, you see truth and this is going to be your challenge in keeping that balanced. And okay. this is the gold and the gift is that you're able to see truth, potential possibility. Um, and then the next step is creating a safe space and inspiring people to 
to take that and to step into it and to like reclaim, you know, their gold. So that's kind of the concept behind, you know, being an igniter and being a mirror of truth is that typically what comes through in my sessions is that, you know, I am simply a mirror and I will reflect what your spirit wants to hear, what wants to say, what, what it wants you to hear. Right. I, yeah. I feel that. That's, and that's so powerful because oftentimes um, it's very hard for us to look in the mirror ourselves. But when somebody um, who is holding that loving, unconditional space for us um, mm-hmm. and gently reflecting back um, the truth that they also see in us, it's sometimes much easier to begin the work of moving through the layers of the truth because you're not judging them. You're not damning them. You're not uh, punishing them. It's not ever about Mm -hmm. punishment. It's about helping them expose their true self so that they can be free. Right. Because until we can, until we're our true self, we're, we're imprisoned in, in being someone that we really aren't. So I love that. All right. So that's great. I holding. Yes, that is huge. Um, and let me ask you this question, because I know for myself, mm-hmm. it's sometimes a challenge is, are you equally as compassionate with holding space for yourself as you are for others? <laughs> well, isn't that just my life's path? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Reiki has been like, just, it's just hard to find words, like an un, just a phenomenal tool and reminder and presence for me to keep coming back to compassion. I'm, I'm doing um, a Reiki mastery teacher course right now over nine months. And okay. my Reiki master teacher is a, a soul coach as well. So there's a lot of like soul coaching involved in this, which I found find to be so helpful when I'm trying to integrate all of these like different systems into my life to be successful in healing myself so that I can support other people as well. And Uh um, in this course, it's just like what keeps coming forwards for me is compassion. Like that's a big part of my purpose in healing myself and in part of my gift that I offer others. And it's always about coming back to compassion for myself, like always, oh, right, oh, right. Like, okay. you know, right. un, unprogramming, undoing the old patternings or the stories that I've collected throughout my life that have been affirmed through other stories and experiences and right. just, right. yeah. And I, and I do I notice, like, it, it is true. Like, when I can love myself and be compassionate towards myself, like, it is effortless. I don't even think about being that way with other people. Right. So, yeah, Yeah, and I think as you grow as a practitioner for myself, uh, that awareness of that compassion really, um, some days if I know that I can't even have the compassion for myself, I certainly can't do that really well for other people. So there's been days when, you know, I just have to take a little break from life because if I don't have the compassion for myself, I surely can't give it out to people. So it really, it's almost like the fuel that my holistic services career runs on is that it's compassion. You know, the more of it I have for myself, the more I'm able to give out to others. So it's huge. So great. I think that's really great. Yeah. So compassion, we'll put that in the, um, the to-do list, find more (laughs) compassion for self. Yes. Okay. So that's, that's great. So tell me a little bit more about modern medium. Like when people hear the word medium, you know, they either think about the TV show medium that used to be on for some of us older people, um, or they think about someone who stands up in front of a room, which we have uh, wonderful relationships with people like that. But how do you see yourself differently as a modern medium? Tell me about that. It's funny. I was thinking about this this morning and the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, do you remember the, the show medicine woman? Did you ever watch that show? I do. Yeah. Yeah. And like, on the prairie. Yeah. Like I remember watching that, um, when I was a kid and my mom's clairvoyant and she's a healer as well. And so, and I would say that my mom's like a garden witch, like she's definitely a medicine woman. So I grew up with that sort of energy and you know hearing my mom's 
I don't want to speak for her, but like what I heard was like her wants to just like live in a field in a forest and, uh, you know, plant her garden and reap her herbs and help people heal. And I think that deeply that is within my soul as well. Um, and then, yeah, like growing up being um, an intuitive and a medium as well, like as a child, but not knowing what it was, watching like the shows and the concepts and the things that just like lit up my world. Like a lot of it was those like, you know, those medium shows or like I remember uh, driving with my grandparents in the car and like listening to those radio talk conversations where you call in and like you're talking to a medium like those used to be so uh -huh. popular. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, like people, you know, this verbiage around being a medium, like people have these conceptualizations about what that means. And so when I was thinking about, like, it's so hard, like, you know, what use, what words do I use to describe what it is that I'm doing in a, in a way that doesn't also confine what I'm doing to a given thing so that it has room to grow. And I liked the, the idea of a modern medium or a modern day healer because, like it's, I feel like maybe it's existed in the fringes, but it's just really starting to come out that people are, are coming out and being like, yeah, I'm a medium and this is what I do to heal in like 2018 in like an incredibly like technologically advanced and innovative society. Um, so it's like, you know, being a medium today and being a healer today is, I think, different and similar, though, to to what we have ideas of from the past. You know, right. like I'm not on a prairie. I haven't grown up you know, on a farm, unfortunately, I would love that. Um, I, you know, it's not the late 1800s when we were having the first like American spiritualist movement. It's, it's not the same, but it, but it is, it's, you know, we're working with the same systems of healing. Um, and as like a modern medium, I like to think that with the internet as well, like, you know, we all have so much access to so much information and training and mentorship now that we can do yeah. Like I can connect with a shaman medicine worker in Australia from Canada. Um, so I say modern medium because I think it also includes whole, a holistic aspect of what it means to be a medium and the different mediums that I work with and that comes through um, and the different tools that I have in my toolbox as a healer and that I will continue to put in. Yeah. Well, and that leads us right into the next category, which is a healer. <laughs> So yeah. I, I know you're a very, um, very talented Reiki healer, but it's so much more than Reiki. So maybe this would be a good time for you to, we'll go back to your early journey, but tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about the Reiki journey and like where you are now, um, but where you came from because, and how you use it as a tool to heal people, you know, or as the facilitator of the healing for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been, I was one of those, those kids at a young age who was pretty set on what they were going to do. Like I want, wanted to be a clinical psychologist for a very, very long time, like before yeah. I could even probably spell psychologist <laughs> um, and went to school and I was very connected to the work. I actually found that I loved sociology more than psychology and perhaps because it allowed me to do like the big macro sort of pull up to see like, what is it that we really need? What is it that as a society and as like people of the same, that we're, what is it that we're missing that, that we're here for, right? Um, but then I also loved working one-on-one -on -one with people. So that's what sort of led me into the psychology realm. And um, post-graduation, went to Australia, worked one-on-one -on -one and worked in mental health and addiction for years, came back, worked here in that area as well. And I mean, I absolutely loved the intimate work. I loved working with, um, with people who had experienced a lot in their life, which really made them a deep well. And some people just don't know how to fill that up or know that it's possible. And I loved working with people who were also at that point where they were just ready, just so ready to make change in their life because they just, it was ready. They were at their rock bottom and, you know, slowly realizing like, you know, who are the people that I really want to work with? What is, what are, what are my gifts and how can I offer them to people and have them take the most of it? Um, and yeah, I realized that, there was some sort of dissonance and disconnection. Like I, I wanted 
to work with people. I knew that that's what I wanted, but it wasn't in this, it wasn't in this context. It wasn't, it wasn't going to be sustainable. It wasn't where I needed to be. So, you know, it was, that was a hard time because like all of a sudden, like years and years of ideations of what I'm going to be and what I'm going to do are just like kind of gone, but like not completely. Cause I like, I, I know where I need to be, but I'm not sure yet. And then, um, one of the owners of a yoga studio that I practiced at asked me to go for coffee one day. And I was like, yeah, sure. And, you know, he was like, have you ever thought about becoming a yoga teacher? And I was like, uh, yeah, but like never really like strongly considered it. Like I remember in my first month being like, wow, I'd love to, to teach this one day because it moved me. And so I was like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And that's when I started you know, my guides and my intuition started turning up a little bit louder. And they were like, yeah, like, you know, maybe, maybe don't get freaked out. But like, maybe talk therapy isn't (laughs) the thing that you're going to do to help people heal. Maybe you're going to help them heal through their body. And whatever is ready to surface will surface. And that's how you'll know that they're ready to work with you. And I'm like, okay. And then about three days before I went, um, flew to Kelowna in, in BC in Canada for my training, my month intensive, I got this like instant download that was like, when you go to your yoga training, you're going to figure out what it is that you need to do for your life. It's not going to be just yoga. It's going to be something different, but you're going to find it. Okay. Um, and that's where, and that's where, um, so for our yoga training, we, we had to do like a 15 minute presentation, each of us. And they were about like I think 62 of us there for that training. So we all sat through our presentations and one of the women from my, from my um, studio did a presentation on the chakras. And at that point, like I had heard of them, but I didn't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. And so she was, she didn't really talk about each one individually. She just talked about the overarching system and then had this app that would tone each of the frequencies that Mm -hmm. align with each of the chakras. And so she had us all lie down on our backs and, close her eyes. And I was like losing my mind, Lori, like every tone (laughs) that came over color flashing over my eyes. Then she's like, the color of the crown chakra is purple. And I'd be like, no. And then like the next one would come and it'd be like, like I'm swimming in purple. blue, And I'd be like, how am I seeing these colors? Like every single one, it like blew my mind. And, um, after that, I was just like, this is a system that resonates so truly with me. And it's something that like, like I've already worked with and I, and I'm remembering this. And when I went home, one of my girlfriends was doing her case studies for Reiki level two. And she started talking to me about it. And I was like, this sounds really interesting. Um, at this point, like my whole life got turned around. I went to you know, changed my life career course, went to this teacher training, which opened up, you know, a huge catalyst for me in my life, met my life partner. And um, he was actually the first person who started pulling healing out of my hands. This was as my girlfriend was talking to me about Reiki. Um, And like, you know, at first I was like, I don't know what is happening. He was like, I don't know what's happening either. But we knew that it was it was good. Right. And then I experienced Reiki and with my girlfriend and I was like, yes, like no doubt in my mind, like this is, this is what led me to physical body work and yoga. And now I'm being led to, to this. And this is, this is like coming home. Like when I did my Reiki level one, it, yeah, it, it really did just feel like I was coming home and like I was finding pieces of myself that I had forgotten about or that I wasn't seeing or that I wasn't ready to see like it's all the right time and and now um now I have no doubt in my mind that Reiki and healing with the body is what I will do for the rest of my life I feel very very fortunate just even saying that that I found that this early on in my life so that I get to practice that well I did get confirmation all over me so that's (laughs) really yeah if it helps any, then uh, you're definitely in your truth. And that's perfect. That's so divinely perfect. And so, of course, you covered both healer and yogi in your title. Yeah. And, that, um, and that's so wonderful. So what you're studying now is an advanced um, mastership so that um, for your Reiki master or you're already a Reiki master or you're in the process of that right now? 
I am in the process of my mastership. Uh, right. Well, I mean, I think I'll probably be in the, pros in the process of becoming a master for a while. Um, I'll be getting this path and collecting all of my tools to put in my satchel as I right. continue to trek through this journey of right. becoming a Reiki master of myself and then right. fully claiming becoming a teacher. That's a huge goal. And I've been getting downloads since level two about specific courses that I want to teach. I'd really love to, um, for example, create like a Reiki level one training for yoga teachers. Um, and I've gotten downloads of like specific um, Reiki hand positions and adjustments that yoga teachers can incorporate into their, their yoga teaching practice and uh -huh. have like specific uh -huh. things like that. So I'm excited to teach and I'm also excited just like um, the Reiki meditations that I'm learning and just like being amazed that like you can literally bring Reiki into everything. Like you can, I can bring my guides and my divine connection into everything I do. Like right. to Absolutely. like giving Reiki to my wallets to like cleanse any karma there or unhealthy connections to money to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like healing ancestry to like re putting Reiki into like cupcakes that I'm, you know, baking for my daughter's class to creating a movement here in Kitchener Waterloo where I live, where I want to collect like a bunch of Reiki practitioners. And we just go around giving Reiki to door frames so that anybody Perfect. who walks through them and they want to receive the Reiki healing, they will get it. And then we just have to recharge yeah. them. Like, you know, like it's yeah. like, we can literally put this healing into everything. And, and I think that like, everybody should get Reiki level one. <laughs> like everybody Absolutely. should. I feel the same you know? way. Both of my, my sons, my two sons, one willingly, one not so willingly. And my daughter, who's only almost three, they're both, a t all three of them are attuned to Reiki one. She doesn't understand it as much, Amazing. but the boys do, 12 and 15. And um, I, I just wanted to empower them with that. I wanted them to have that practice. So, um, so at least they understand there's so much more. Like, I wish I had known about Reiki when I was 12, you know, right? when I was 15, when I was uh, opening and expanding. So I'm with you. So that's yeah. wonderful. So the last part of your title that we didn't talk about yet is intentional artisan. So I didn't mention that you're a wonderful singer. Um, I know that's not your artisan work that we're talking about specifically, but um, you are an artist in all that you do. Yes. Um, I know in how you deliver your healing, there's artistry, um, how you deliver your music and tell us about the intentional artisan that comes out in your, um, as a holistic service for you. Yeah. Well, as a kid, like, I mean, most kids you'll find like love crystals. Like, you know, okay. I, I do markets, um, and I sell crystals and, you know, um, sage bundles and I'll do like mediumship readings. And it's funny cause like, it's always the kids that come running up and they just like, like handle all of the crystals. They just, they're so mm -hmm. in love with them. And I remember being entranced by those as well as a kid, but always just always very aware of the healing qualities and characteristics of crystals. Even if I didn't know them by name or by frequency or what they did, like I could just as a felt sense oriented person, like I was very aware of their power. Um, and so I started making pieces for myself and then my friends or my family members would be like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Like, where'd you get it? And I'd be like, oh, I made it. Like, I can make something for you. So I started making pieces for my friends. And then all of a sudden, like, their friends wanted pieces. And then it's like, it was like, whoa, like, kind of like a just business venture just kind of like floated down and dropped into my lap. And it was like, oh, this is exciting. Like, and it's almost exciting in kind of like a sneaky way because it's like people are like, oh, this, this bracelet is so beautiful I'm like yeah it's so beautiful like you know you should you should wear this just because it's so beautiful and then he 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 like there are these like <laughs> crystal vibrations that are go, gonna go in there and like it's kind of like backdoor healing and it's kind of like right. you know a right. way for people to get comfortable with something that otherwise might feel uncomfortable or a little too vulnerable for them because they can't see it oh. or they don't know it but then they start to experience it and feel it and they can no longer, or they don't want to deny themselves of that anymore. So um, that's kind of what, what kind of created Conscious Adornment, which is my, um, my intentional uh, artistry um, crystal business. Um, right. 
And, and it's just, again, like another extension of a tool that I can offer to my clients. Like, you know, you've got sure. um, imbalance happening in your first three chakras. You know, you can do this meditation. You can do self-healing. We can continue these sessions here. You can do some journaling. And, like, you can work with crystals. And if you want to have them a little bit closer to you, then you can actually adorn your body consciously mm-hmm. with these crystals. And, so and it can be I an empowering the- tool. I have the tree of life here, but on the back is La Piste La Soul, because oh, yeah. I know that I want, um, I'm doing so much more public speaking, and I'm putting myself out there, and I'm trying to always be authentic and speak the truth, so I consciously mm-hmm. am adorned with this, um, this uh, earth you know, gem that uh, is meant to help strengthen and open my, my throat chakra, so but I yeah. would like one of your adornment pieces. I need, um, Oh, you'll get, I have a few areas <laughs> that I want to work with. <laughs> so, but it's really, like you said, it's intentional. And that's what I love about it is because you set the intention for this beautiful, um, piece of work and talk about a unique, uh, one of a kind gift that you can give someone that you love or that needs help or is ill or even is, you know, about to, uh, like, all the graduates that are out there right now embarking on new um, part of their life, you know, new careers. Like you can Absolutely. actually create a very intentional piece for them that um, will help support and align them going forward. So I just think it's a beautiful opportunity for you. And really there's not too many people else I can think of that would better um, mm-hmm. serve such a great purpose because your, your light and your energy is just so beautiful. So I love that. Oh, thanks, Lily. Yeah. I just love talking with you. So, um, and I just love your energy. Um, so speaking of energy, so of course, while I'm talking to you, I, I hear like what I, I should, of course, it's not exactly what we were supposed to talk about, but I know what I need to talk <laughs> about. So you said two things that I really want you to um, disseminate for us, which would be the first one is felt sense. All right. Because um, uh, I hear that. I understand it. Um, I don't think I am. (laughs) I'm a lot of things, but I want to understand that more. Um, And the other thing were downloads. So I would like you to share with our viewership, you know, talk to them Mm -hmm. about what a download is. Like they might be experiencing them, but they might not even know what it feels like or what to look like, look for. So, you know, this is an opportunity for you to help them recognize what a download is and then what should they do with that information? Like how should they capture it? Like what are your, what would be your advice for that? Okay. Um, so felt sense. Yes. I feel like it can be a scary world and overwhelming world. If you're felt sense oriented, I I think that that's like a lot of what's coming out with, um, like there are kind of like two, two sides to this coin of felt sense ship, if you will. And one of them is just being like highly sensitive. Like we're getting like, you know, we're hearing that verbiage in mainstream, you know, there's tons of books now on like being a highly sensitive person or being an empath. Like you go on elephant journal or like you go online, you can find tons of blogs about it. Um, And I think that's a big part of it is like felt sense. So, you know, empaths tend to feel a lot and pick up a lot, but a lot of empaths Mm -hmm. have like digestional issues or their psoas muscle in their belly is so tight because like they're so connected to um, the sensations that come through their body when they're feeling specific things. I would say that's very felt sense. So Mm -hmm. if we're looking at the senses, it's felt sense. Um, For me, like realizing almost like a learning, like um, a learning type. Um, an experiential type, like how is it that I experience this world? And recognizing that I am an incredibly felt sense individual has really changed and helped me to understand how I perceive the world, um, how I might misperceive the world, might be overwhelmed, what I need, like it goes into even like my love language. Um, So typically when I'm interacting with someone or I'm experiencing something, my core feedback sensors are my body, like literally physically, like how I'm feeling, where I'm feeling it in my body um, is I think where I'm getting my first bits of like information before I'm even processing and articulating what I'm experiencing. I think right. that what I really experience and what I'm sensitive to is my felt senses. Um, like I, 
you know, I have people in my family who um, are pain bodies and they've carried pain and trauma in their bodies and, and it comes mm-hmm. through their felt sense. They're through their pain. They can't yes. get out of it. You know, an addiction has come to my family. And I think when now, like being able to look at these generations, I think it might be because I have families on both sides that are felt sense oriented. Yes. Um, which is also why like I need to move my body. Like the more active and strong I am, um, the stronger I am and more in, in deeper integrity with myself emotionally. Um, and then my gifts, like my gifts come through my felt senses. I feel something mm-hmm. when a client says something and it is the truth. I get full yes. body goosebumps, you know, yes. <laughs> um, like being one of those people, like not everybody. And I didn't realize that not everybody's like this, but like I'll hear a song and it will move me to the point where like, mm-hmm. it's like a whole wave moves through me or, mm-hmm. um, you know, being moved emotionally to cry or to, to gasp or to, you know, whatever, because of the felt sense experience. So, um, yeah, I would say that that's kind of like what I mean by felt sense, but I also use that terminology in my yoga classes, like, you know, drop into your body, turn your, turn your monkey mind off, keep your, keep your mind on for the sense of being able to keep yourself safe and being present and aware of like what it is that's coming up in your body and what it is you want to do with that information and encouraging people when they're in a safe place in a studio room to bring your felt senses forward. It's like, how are you feeling? Get out of your head. Like we're living in a society that um, affirms being smart, affirms yeah. what you can do, be a big dreamer, make a big life, you know, and there's, there's not a lot of um, encouragement to feel, you know, but we're coming into that movement, like the Me Too movement, like we're recognizing this toxic masculinity, this toxic femininity, and we're realizing that we need to find more balance. And I think a big stepping stone towards finding that is like not being afraid to feel, you know? And here's what I hear. And I feel like this is going to be something that you're really going to be able to help people with, you know, as you progress along your path is there's so many women, especially like, you know, I can really relate to this. You know, I have my, you know, I'm much more clairvoyant and clear audience. Right. Um, but I have hidden under my, physical body for so many years, Um, you know, especially uh, women and men who have struggled with weight, um, you know, weight is really just another layer of not having to feel, right? So one of the things I've had to learn in my journey towards, um, you know, surrendering and freeing myself from suffering has been to allow myself to feel, right? Because, um, when you are ashamed of your body or your physical self for so long, like you literally shut down your ability to feel because it's safer that way. So um, I think that that's a huge opportunity to really help and heal large quantities of people where teaching them how to feel again. And what I know about feelings are that the painful emotions that we associate, you know, with feelings, Um, Mm -hmm. there's a beginning and there's an end to them, but they won't ever end until we actually allow them to move through us. And so Mm -hmm. being willing to open up to feeling them in the first place is the biggest and hardest step. So I think that that's, so truly, even though I may be X, Y, and Z, you know, far along on my journey um, and an open connection, um, I know that, being felt sense is an area that I have to continually open up to. Like I need to continue to learn how to feel, um, how to trust what I'm feeling and know that my body is my first tool in my toolkit. Um, but like I said, I know I'm not alone. I know that there's so many people that, you know, they don't want to feel anything because it's way safer. Um, Mm -hmm. so I think that that's a big part of your gift that could be shared with a lot of people is, you know, just teaching them like why they need to feel in the first place and like the freedom that can come from it or what they're feeling. Like, I think we're all feeling, right. (laughs) We all, we're already feeling it's just right. Maybe, maybe it's just like, or they're reconnecting the the speaker, you know, like yes, hearing what we're feeling. Absolutely. Uh, Knowing Mm -hmm. how to interpret it. 
Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's not just a stomach ache. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> There's more to I've, it. <laughs> that's why I've loved yoga so much because that right. is what yoga has been for me. Like I found sure. my yoga practice, um, and this might have to just be like another, another talk that we have. Um, sure. Cause I found my yoga practice during my, um, when I was, when I was, uh, the word that I just can't find when I got diagnosed with cancer. Um, that was like, you know, having my yoga practice was what kept me in remission because <laughs> being someone who, you know, I was 18 when I was diagnosed and then had a, a major surgery, went through six rounds of chemotherapy and, and within a month and a half went right back into second year university. And so like I would wake up on some morning so tired and like they said, like, if cancer comes back, like, it will be pretty aggressive and you'll know. And so I would be like, oh, my gosh, I'm so tired today. Like, I'm, I'm relapsing. And it was – and, like, I, I recognized, like, Tasha, you're going to create the stress. And the stress is going to create the perfect home for okay. cancer to come back into your body. Like, you can't – like, this is not sustainable, right. you know. And so I was like, okay, right. well, I need, I, need to, I need to go to yoga and I need to find my medium for communicating with my body so that I don't – like I just watched this really interesting um, uh, video on death and this, this guy is talking about how he's basically like, um, like a doula for, for people who are dying. Okay. And he says like to live is to die. And it is like to live is to die. And just, you know, understanding like what, what that really means and, and, and not being afraid of it and, and understanding what the fears are is, is incredibly important um, for me to be present. And I just realized that like, I, I need to understand what it is that my body is telling me because I don't want, like we, we shouldn't live in a society where our doctors are telling us that we're dying. Like, right. where, well, how did I not hear that? Like I'd had right. cancer for at least four years. I was not listening. Right. I was not present with my body. Right. Um, and right. so I decided, like, I don't want that to happen. Like, I want to know what's happening in my yeah. body. I want to be the one who's talking to my body. I don't want this doctor who's, like, you know, the in-between man. Um, and right. yoga was that. Like, it's exactly where I practice listening and trying to learn how to communicate with my body, like, learning the language of my body. And then, like, now that I'm connected with that, it's, it's so easy to, to, to bring other, other work into my yoga practice, too, like my self-mastery work. Like, how can I work on practicing boundaries with myself in my yoga practice? You know, like, it's, it's just such a powerful platform. I could talk forever about it. I'll try not to. Well, we will. <laughs> we'll have to do a whole we will. yoga practice uh, session with Tasha for sure because God yeah. knows I need to learn a lot about it too. <laughs> so I think the last part of my question uh, we talked about felt yes. sense, but the and and this might be a good place for us to um, and maybe you can talk about the first time. I'm just checking the time uh, to yes. be respectful of your time and um, how do you receive downloads? And this would be a perfect time for you to explain like when was the first time that you were consciously aware that you were receiving downloads and how did you learn to trust that? Yeah. I know. <clears throat> That's a big closing one. <laughs> it is. Um, I think I started using the terminology downloads within the past two to three years. Um, it became, it's, you know, my gifts came were very present when I was a younger child. I experienced a really scary experience with some pretty low grade spirits when I was 14. And um, I did not know how powerful my light was. I did not know, I had no eldership in that and it was dangerous and I had a really scary experience and I shut everything down. I remember saying in my mind, I see nothing, I hear nothing, I know nothing, gone. Just don't come back. Um, and then, um, that started to lift, um, about six years ago, um, slowly but surely. And I, I still had that fear in the back of my mind, like, Oh, you know, don't, don't, 
don't get interested or curious about this right now because like you don't you still don't know what you're doing you still don't have an elder that you can learn from to be safe um because mm-hmm. this is stuff to not joke around with sometimes you know and mm-hmm. um and then so it was my reiki level one that really gave me like just the confidence and the security of reiki like <laughs> Nothing can, in the light. yeah, uh-huh. like nothing can get me if I keep remembering that I'm in the light and that I have uh-huh. divine access and I'm a channel. So that was like a beautiful comfort blanket. And, and of course, receiving the eldership from my Reiki master and then just starting to actually manifest and attract my people and hearing, having these conversations with people who experience who have experienced the same things as me and hearing them articulate it and being like, Oh yeah, like I've experienced that too. And and this is what I would call it, or this is how I articulate it. And then we kind of started like our own sort of verbiage and helped each other verbally process what it is that we were experiencing. Um, And yeah, like as I've stepped into being a Reiki practitioner, I now feel like I have this like space in my brain or it's not maybe it's not even in my brain like where are our thoughts but that's a whole other conversation um but it's like it's like it's an empty vessel it's an empty space where i just boop like that's why i say it's like a download it's like ding and it's there and it's a knowing but i have no idea intellectually or from my ego mind where that information came from how i know it i don't need to know it i instantly like i know it's truth or I'll research it and it will be like true, like the specific like acupuncture point that I'm like drawn to go to, or like I'm massaging someone's foot and I feel something and I'm like, oh, this is your kidney. And then I'll look up reflexology and that place will be the place where the kidney is in the bottom of the arch. And it's like, you know, so it's, it's like this space that is not with ego. The hard thing that I had, the trouble that I had earlier on in my life was I feel like growing up in a society where like people are like, well, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. Or like, well, where does that come? Like it was like self doubt, but also just like living in a society where I felt like peer doubt. (laughs) Yeah. Like I had lots of doubting Thomas's (laughs) proof before it could be seen as valid or true, which, you know, I understand. And I feel like that's, you know, a major aspect of our society that's holding us back. Is it like, I have to go to somebody else to learn, what I know or to validate what I know. No, like we all know so much. We all have so much access to wisdom that is true. And, and it's true to me. So that's, you know, most important. Um, And I I do think that comes with maturity. You know, I think that comes with learning to stand in your vulnerability. Um, I think um, Brene Brown, if you've ever read her, she's wonderful. She talks about being in the arena. And like, I feel like that's what you're doing. I feel like that's what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that neither of us planned on sitting here on um, the end of May in 2018, talking about being holistic practitioners who are channels of the light. Like that wasn't yeah. in my plan. No. Um, but that's where my life has evolved. And that's where your life has evolved. And mm-hmm. um you know, I look at it as, okay, like we're in the arena, we're standing here, we're willing to share that light, we're willing to teach others how to access the light on their own. And um, I really feel like um, we have a lot of similarities in that um, we resonate, mine is reflective resonance, yours mirror of truth. And it's we Mm -hmm. resonate back to our clients, you know, what it is that they're most needing to understand to move them forward on their path. And the only reason we know that is because we're willing to be that channel. It's a sacrifice. You know, it's not easy standing up and saying, okay, you know, this is what I do. This is who I am. Yeah. Um, Because once you're aware and once you're awake, you know, there's no going back. I mean, you can shut it down. You can pretend, but it's always in there. You Mm -hmm. always know. And I think you're not alone in having shut down um, because it's safer, you know, and we all... I'm pretty sure everyone I've met who's in the, our position now has shut down in their youth for some reason or another. Um, yeah. Most of it is a lack of eldership, you know, not having anyone to teach us how to manage the voices or the information or the downloads or the feelings, right? That deep, overwhelming sense of 
um, sorrow, and you don't even know where it comes from. So, yeah. you know, I, I totally um, think that's a beautiful, um, it's, it's a sacrifice to some extent, but I think that you would agree that it's probably the most fulfilling uh, thing I've ever done in my life. I'm not sure about you, but um, I can't imagine, you know, spending my days doing anything else at this point. So I can't either. <laughs> there you go. I Perfect. really can't. Yeah. So I would love to do more of this. I would love to yeah. have more time with you. And Such I want to make sure everyone knows that Tasha will be live in on the Our Site Your Light page. Um, mm -hmm. And if you haven't joined our group yet, please come and join our group because um, Tasha does these awesome thing called rune mm -hmm. readings. So I know she's mm -hmm. going to do some of that for us. Um, and just you'll have access to you know, our insider content, our group is illuminate oh, your soul circle. And I know just that a wealth um, of knowledge. Yeah, I know that Lynn will post that below for us so that if you'd like to join our group, it's a free Facebook group. Um, we'd love to have you. And Tasha, I'm so grateful that you joined oh, me. This was so much fun. We should do it more often just for coffee. Yes. But um, yeah, <laughs> I'm so grateful that you're part of our site, your light. And I just cannot wait to see um, how you're going to help uh, change the world because you're definitely part of that shift for sure. We're, so. we're already doing it, Lori. We're already doing it. We're doing it. It's happening. One, it's all happening. One day at a time. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Well, I'm sending you okay. so much love and light. Thank you everybody for um, oh, you too. tuning in and learning more about Tasha yes. and our set your light. And yes. we will be back. Um, we're scheduled for tomorrow night at 7 p.m. with the beautiful Lois Love Grove all the way mm -hmm. from Australia. So, uh, Tasha's right, in Canada. Mike. I'm in Massachusetts. Uh, Lois will be here tomorrow night at seven for Woo Woo Wednesday. So be sure mm -hmm. to tune in. And Tasha, thank you. We'll be seeing a lot more of you. Thanks so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. Okay, I'll talk to you all soon. Excellent. Okay, thank you. <laughs>